Okay, folks, welcome back to the Mike Lopez Show. I'm your host, AC Mike. Listen, another special guest. You hear me say it all the time because they are special. It's the guests, the followers, the viewers, and all you folks that bring the Mike Lopez Show to life. And this is a gentleman that brings a lot of things besides the Mike Lopez Show to life. Rich, introduce yourself to the audience. I'm Rich Helfand. I'm the executive director of Lucy the Elephant in Margate. And Mike, I think you're special for all you do for Atlantic City. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'll give you something then when we go down the uh, elevator. Now, like, listen, folks, this guy is uh, Atlantic City born, bred, knows it all about here. Mr. Atlantic City right here, I really believe. Uh, you have a rich history, family history, work history, passion, whether it's uh, volunteer and whatnot. We want to talk, but by the time this airs, the Miss America competition or pageant. I think you guys could still call it pageant. We call it a pageant. That's yeah. right. That, yeah, good. It, 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 it'll have been uh, played out, though. But just tell a little f- folks a little bit about that history uh, and let them know what it's all about. So the Miss America pageant was formed 30 years ago by John Schultz and Gary Hill, who are probably the most preeminent gay couple in the region. And John owned all of the nightclubs back in the all day. Of them. And had this idea that all the people, not all the people, but a lot of the people who worked behind the scenes at Miss America, never got to see the pageant. They missed it. So he thought if, and they all came to his clubs after the, after the preliminary nights and even after the finals, they came to his club and party. So he thought, let's do a pageant for the people that missed it. We'll call it Missed America and we'll do it as a fundraiser. So John was one of the founders of the South Jersey AIDS Alliance. So the money back then all went to the AIDS Alliance. The first year, it was a very modest show it was done on the deck of Studio Six. And the winner uh, got a Burger King crown and he was presented with a bouquet of dead roses in the one ads of the Atlantic City Press. And the show has grown over the past 30 years. It is now a major contender. It's television ready now. And over the past 30 years, I'm so proud to tell you, Mike, that we have donated more than $400,000 to LGBTQ charities locally, regionally, and nationally. And that's awesome. And, and as we talk today, that uh, event, that pageant takes place at Mark G. Edison, the Hard Rock. So when you say it's evolved and it's somewhere special. It's, you know. it's, it's prime time. It, right. is, it is ready for prime time. Uh, Joe Lupo has been so gracious as a host and a friend to us and to our community. And he wanted to move it from the sound waves, which was there two years ago. Of course, last year we didn't do it because of Covey. Right. You call Covey. It. And uh, so this year he said, if we're going to do it, let's do it big. So we moved it to Edis. And uh, hopefully by the time this airs, we can tell everyone that it was a sellout. Right. And we have a new Miss America and more money raised for LGBTQ charities. And on to next year. And hopefully by next year, television. And it will be television ready, and it is television ready. And thank you very quickly for letting me be a so-called celebrity judge. No, not so-called. You are, in fact, one of the ten celebrity judges, and you are a celebrity. You really, you know, you know, all kidding aside, and and you know, you 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 breathe this town, you bleed this town, and you love it, and it shows in everything you do, and it makes a difference, and and we appreciate it. I appreciate that and kind words, and guys like you and Gary and John who I look up to and watch to and ask for information. And, you know, I come to you quite a bit because these guys and gals, they all know the city much better than I do. But all I do is try to share it on social. But now let's talk about this thing. You have this monstrosity, My girl. My girl your girl, yeah. uh, another passion of yours. Um, Rich, take us a little bit. And again, we don't have a lot of time, but we have enough to know. Give us the origins of Lucy and and her move and whatnot, and then we'll go a little bit sure. into it. So, as I said in the beginning of the show, I'm the executive director of Lucy the Elephant. And for those of you who don't know, and I'm sure everybody knows, Lucy is a giant elephant-shaped building on the beach in Margate, which when she was built was called South Atlantic City. Right. Um, Lucy was the brain trust of a developer from Philadelphia by the name of James Lafferty, who built her in 1881 as a marketing gimmick to sell real estate. She was the first real estate marketing tool that ever happened anywhere. And she was uh, very much responsible for the development of the Jersey Shore. Lafferty thought that if he could build this crazy structure, that people who had are coming down to Atlantic City, which was a brand new resort Mm -hmm. founded in 1854. The train had just come down from Camden in Philadelphia. He thought if he could build this oddity, advertised in the Philadelphia papers that this giant elephant structure was here, that people would come down and see it. And while they were there, he could sell his real estate holdings. And that's really how the development of the Jersey Shore began. 
and that's an awesome story. And when you talk about 1854, Dr. Jonathan Pitney, uh, health and wellness, and that was part of it. Uh, Lucy was part of it. Now, moving forward, I mean, uh, she's been around for over 100 plus, and you'll give us the exact number of years. But the restoration now, this is where it's near and dear to your heart. And I know we had one recently, and we're about to engage in another. Talk a little bit. The, the current project is called the Exterior Surface Restoration Project. And Lucy's 140 years old. Okay. She doesn't look it, but she's 140 years old. She's made out of tin. Most of the metal on her is tin. And as you know, tin rusts. Lucy sits 100 feet from the Atlantic Ocean. So paper will rust there. So you can imagine how much rust is on her. And we're at a point now where the architects and the engineers have said, you can't put any more paint on it because there's mm. so much paint, layers of paint on it, that if you put any more, it's just going to bubble off. So we started to peel the paint away and we discovered that the metal is so badly rotted in so much of her surface that we have to replace every inch of the metal on her. And we're replacing it with a brand new alloy called Monel. Monel is a nickel and copper based alloy that has no iron. So in theory, it won't rust. That's the good part. The bad part is we had to shut Lucy down for nine months to accomplish this task. And it's the most expensive thing we have ever done for her. It's a $1.9 million mm. undertaking. The gift shop is going to remain open through the whole process, okay. but the monument itself is closed. We were very fortunate to get a $700,000 grant from the state and a $500,000 grant from the federal government, from the, uh, the National Park Service. But we're still $700,000 shy of the money we need to pay for this project. The project is well underway now. The scaffolding is up. She's all enclosed in a, in a weatherproof envelope so you can't even see her anymore. And hopefully when we reveal her on Memorial Day, she'll be a brand new Lucy. And that sounds beautiful to me. And I can't wait to ride my bike down there. Very quickly, tell folks how they can donate to uh, Lucy. Absolutely, Mike. Thank you. Um, so folks, you want to help us. Uh, all donations are tax deductible because Lucy's a 501c3. And you can donate several ways. You can either go to our website, which is lucythelephant.org, or you can mail in donations to Lucy the Elephant, 1 Lucy Plaza, Margate, New Jersey, 08402. Or you can stop in the gift shop and drop one off in person. And that's a wonderful way to do it, to meet you and what you got out there and happening in Margate. I love it. It's a, it's a, a place. Where, but what's that elephant? I love just telling people I want to send them to you. And I do. And I don't know if they say that Mike sent them or whatnot. But folks, make sure you get on out there and check that out and support it. We are one of the few uh, communities, beach communities that have this type of um, uh, community uh, togetherness, whether it's Margate. Uh, Vetner, Atlantic City, Brigantine, Apsekin, that works together. And that elephant is only going to survive by the folks donating and loving Absolutely. it and accepting and embracing it. And you know, it. Mike, I'm glad you said that because to the visitor coming to our region, it's all Atlantic City. Right. We don't know geographic boundaries. Right. We're all part of Atlantic City. We all need to embrace Atlantic City because Atlantic City is the economic engine that feeds all of us. And Lucy is a big part of the tourism package for the region. Um, and, and she's a must-see. She's older than the Statue of Liberty. She's the oldest right. roadside attraction in the United States. And she's the cutest elephant in the world. There, there you go. You said it all. To close it, folks. We've been talking to Richard from over at Lucy the Elephant. Make sure you get out there and go see that beautiful monstrosity. She's going to be there for many, many more years, hopefully 140 more. Hopefully, yes. Thank you very much, folks. Stay right where you're at. We'll be right back. <laughs>